As per our media alert, we are here to submit a dossier to the president and John will take us through why we are here and the detail of the dossier that we will submit him today. John, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Solly, and thank you, Solly, <laughs> for being here today and obviously thanks to the members of the media. Uh, today we'll be handing over a dossier with a, an accompanying letter to President Sora Ramaphosa setting out the detailed and damning allegations of corruption that have been leveled against Deputy President Paul Mashatile. Given the fact that the President uh, has not broken his silence on these allegations, despite the numerous exposés and excellent work done by investigative journalists from a variety of media houses, it's clear that the President has absolutely no desire or will to address the very, very serious um, fact that over the uh, last couple of months, these serious explosive exposés, which clearly point to violations of the Prevention and Combating of Corrupt Activities Act, the Public Finance Management Act, and now the Executive Members Ethics Act, um, have been ignored. By handing over the documents today to the President, we are going to make sure that he can no longer deny the fact that he is aware of these allegations. It's absolutely essential that he comes out and says something about what is going on with his deputy president. The reality is that had the president carried out the lifestyle audits that he promised South Africans at the beginning of his term, we would not be sitting with this situation because all of these issues relating to Paul Mashatile's web and network of corrupt activities and network of influence peddling and other individuals who receive contracts from the state would have come to light and we could have prevented this. So yet another broken promise from the president has ended up in real consequences for the people of South Africa. With the opening of parliament less than a week away, we have now provided the president with the information that he needs to remove President Paul Mas Deputy President Paul Mashatile. South Africa cannot be expected to, preside, to be presided over by a deputy president who is facing such damning allegations. Should the president fail to take action after the delivery of this dossier today, we will pursue the following actions. We will lay criminal charges against Paul Mashatile using the information that's collated in the dossier, of which the president will now be in possession, to make the case for his immediate investigation and prosecution. Secondly, we will file an Executive Members Ethics Act complaint against the Deputy President for his violation of the Executive Ethics Code. Thirdly, a complaint to the Ethics Committee in Parliament as the Deputy President is a Member of Parliament. And fourthly, we will lodge a complaint with the Public Protector calling for a full investigation into all of these. In all of our submissions to law enforcement agencies, we are going to make it very clear that we have brought all of these to the President's attention and that his failure to act consequently will therefore represent complicity in what has been going on. This is essential because just this last week, South Africa plummeted to its lowest ever level on the Global perception, Corruption Perceptions Index, confirming that corruption is worse under President Ramaphosa than it ever was under President Jacob Zuma, and that the illegal activities of ANC cadres continues to hollow out the state, our public service, and chip away at investor and public confidence in our government. If a fish rots from the head down, then President Ramaphosa clearly sees it fit to preside over a corrupt government with a rotten deputy president. South Africans have unfortunately learned from hard experience that the president lacks the courage to do the right thing. And that is why we are going to step in to lead by intensifying the campaign for Deputy President Mashatile to be held accountable via all avenues. But the fastest solution to the scourge of endemic corruption in South Africa under the ANC is to vote the governing party out. And this is why it's crucial for South Africans to use the opportunity on the 3rd and 4th this coming weekend to go out and register so that they would be able to vote for a new 
corruption-free government in this year's elections. We cannot continue as a country to normalize corruption under the ANC, and the DA will ensure that those who continue to perpetrate this crime against each and every South African citizen will be held to account. A new government would immediately make lifestyle audits mandatory for any public office bearer at a senior government level, as well as senior government officials. Secondly, we will, within the first year of office, reintroduce the scorpions into South Africa so that we have a multidisciplinary anti-corruption agency that is able to take the fight to corruption to the highest level. The reason, the very reason the scorpions were disbanded is because they started to get far too close to those at the top of the ladder in our political life. We need to reintroduce a multidisciplinary agency that will act without fear and favor and eliminate corrupt politicians from being able to hold office and continuing to damage the South African state and in so doing deprive people of their jobs result in a lack of houses being built, a failing education system, and a failing SAPS that can no longer keep us safe. Corruption is not a victimless crime. The victims of corruption are the 30 million South Africans who live in poverty and who are locked out of opportunity. By eliminating corruption, there will be more money to be spent on the people rather than the politicians. That new era can start after the election in this year, but it's going to require every citizen to register to vote. Frankly, there is too much at stake in this election for people to stay at home. People need to come out and register and they need to vote so that we can bring a big broom into the buildings behind me and clean out the corruption and start a new era of clean, accountable government that delivers for the people and not the politicians. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, John. We'll now hand over to Solim Simang and then take questions afterwards. Well, thank you very much. Um, from a Houghton perspective, you would know that we have been dealing with quite a lot of the legacy that uh, stems from uh, Paul Mashatini's term as MEC for human settlements here. You would know about the so-called um, loans that were given um, to a company belonging to his son where his house, um, you know, seems to have been paid um, out of. And this is something that we have been asking for. Houghton is sitting with over 1.3 uh, uh, million um, in terms of uh, the housing backlog. Yet at the same time, we haven't been able to then address the housing backlog because of millions of rents that have been paid without any work having been done. We're sitting now with projects that for years haven't been completed and is going to require more millions that needs to be paid. We're sitting where bridges were supposed to have been built but were never built under Paul Mashatile and we have been asking but why has that not really been investigated thoroughly or us uh, being able to then be given answers when we ask for those answers in, uh, in, in the legislature? It is also um, very interesting that the so-called Alex Mafia, which Paul Machatila seems to be an integral part and role um, player in this, um, you know, uh, the Alex Mafia that you would know, we've been told about the billions that were supposed to go towards the Alexander Renewal Project that never really went anywhere. Alex still looks the same or even worse than what it used to look like. Yet billions had been spent there. And we've been asking, but we haven't been getting um, responses. We've been asking who paid for the house um, that uh, Paul Machatile lives in? And why did it come out of uh, the, 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 the Houghton government's um, um, coffers, and yet nobody seems uh, to be arrested, or nobody seems to be disciplined in that um, in that effect. We've been asking why is it as well that you would have a backlog that stems so long back then and millions and millions, hundreds of millions have been spent and we haven't really been able to then get answers to those. So we are, from a Houghton perspective, very much interested in ensuring that the SIU gets to investigate what is happening here, gets to then give us answers to how the people of um, Houghton have been affected by the corruption that has been taking place here and also what kind of recuperation can actually then take place so that we'll be able to to then get as much money as we possibly um, can get back um, into the coffer so that we can build houses for the people of uh, of, 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 of Houghton. President that promised uh, the people of Alexander a million houses. Not a single brick has actually been laid in Alexander since he made that promise in 2019. And we now have to be asking, 
couldn't that money be recovered somehow by investigating the corruption that has been following Paul Machatile? And that money then can go towards ensuring that dream of one million, rent, uh, one million houses for the people of Alexander and the people of Houting in general can actually then, uh, you know, be realized. And this is something that we are now giving the president an opportunity to then come out and say there is going to be an investigation and there's going to be answers to the questions that we have been asking. And the people of Houting and the people of South Africa can finally know what the truth is and we can take it from there. Thank you very much. Um, thanks very much, Soli and John. Let's quickly take questions, mindful of the scorching heat, um, so that we can accommodate everyone. Um, I see two hands. Let's just keep it that way. Introduce yourself, and then we yeah. get on. Yeah, you are the first one. Thank you very much. Um, it's Nando from Africa. I just wanted to know um, the dossier that you're handing over. Firstly, who you handed it over to hasn't mm. been received by the presidency. Mm. The second thing is. Um, inside that dossier, is it just allegations on the basis of media reports or is there an internal investigation that the DA conducted that you believe would actually make these claims have veracity in a court of law? Sure. Let's just take them combined so that we, are, we manage time better. It's not the first time you open criminal charges against a government official or anyone, an office bearer, to say. Um, what makes you think that this time around you will get the necessary response that you need to, t to have action executed against the country's number two? Thank you. Cool. Um, is there any other hand so that we just grab them? Cool. Let's go. Do you know when the deputy president is expected to appear before the integrity committee in parliament? Cool. And the last one will be you. Then we'll uh, combine the Jake from Pretoria FM. Uh, John, I just want to ask uh, you, handing over the dossier today, why not go to direct to the police station and uh, lay their charges? Sure. Thank you, thank you very, very much, and thanks for the questions. Um, the, doss uh, the dossier was supposed to be handed over uh, this morning, and we've made extensive contact with the president's um, office. On Monday, um, the communication was sent at 12.08 to the chief director's office. Uh, it was confirmed at 12.26. A reminder was sent on Wednesday, the 31st, at 12.44. A reminder was sent at 14.34 on Thursday. And there still seems to be some uh, juggling around who's going to be handing it over, but it will be handed over today. Um, Inside the, uh, the, the dossier, it's mainly allegations that have emerged from uh, the media, but this we've also added some of the issues that we've been raising in Parliament uh, around some of the allegations relating to the Deputy President and uh, the connections with um, high-profile individuals in South Africa who seem to be benefiting uh, incredibly well from government contracts um, and the like. We will have no option but to lay criminal charges. We're giving the president essentially till Wednesday next week before the State of the Nation address to take action. This is not the first time in our country's history that a deputy president has faced serious allegations of corruption and improper behavior. You may recall that the erstwhile leader of the new MK party was himself a deputy president when he faced the corruption charges over in Kandla and the news reports around that. And he was removed by then President Thabo Mbeki from office. We believe that the president appoints the deputy president and therefore the president is responsible for removing the deputy president. So our first stop is here, but I have no doubt that the president is going to continue to hide on this matter. He's avoided and dodged all media queries on the Mashatile matter because he doesn't want to deal with it or acknowledge it. Um, and we will then, if there are no moves or announcements made by the president prior to the SONA, we will obviously then proceed directly to the South African police services and lay charges. We have laid charges against a number of government officials and some of them have come to fruition. We've uh, had some success in particularly the Zondo Commission matter and some of those criminal matters there. Um, we have no choice. The South African police service is responsible for investigating crime. And we will definitely lodge those complaints and, and, and open the case. And we will then follow them up with regular parliamentary questions as well. Um, Jake's question was around? We're going to give the president till Wednesday next week to take action. As I said, the Constitution makes it clear. 
the deputy president serves at the pleasure of the president. If the president is unhappy with his particular performance or is concerned about allegations swirling around him, it is up to the president to remove him from office. I come back again to the point I made earlier, that had the lifestyle audits that we all promised in, by the president, which we're about to now end this term of office in a few months' time, not one of those lifestyle audits has been done. Not one of those ministers have subjected themselves to lifestyle audits, despite five years of broken promises that we were going to get these. Had those lifestyle audits been done, it would have prevented what we're seeing now with Paul Mashatile, because those things would have come up in the lifestyle audit. There would have been questions about how he is affording to live in multi-million rand houses uh, with uh, the limited income uh, that does not match the lifestyle to which he leads. And that's precisely why lifestyle audits are going to be absolutely essential for any government coming into office uh, in May this year. And there was a question about the um, mm. executive ethics complaint. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure when the, the hearing is coming. I know they have been sitting this week, uh, but I'm not sure much, if much of Tila's matters on the agenda, but I can find out from our team there and let you know what date that's scheduled for. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much. Thanks for braving the heat. And if you want to do, do you want to have a follow up, yeah. follow up or one on one? Okay, cool. I didn't see your hand. Yeah. Well, just um, on a separate note, of course, uh, ironically, you're having this press briefing in Twane, but you know, the cities of Ekurleni and Twane have not provided their annual financial statements to the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Um, what's your, your your response on that? Because we, we do know that failure to do so by the end of this month could see their debt-raising instruments suspended. That's number one. And just maybe to Mr. John Steenhazen, um, your road to the elections, how's that looking like for the party, particularly because we've been seeing, again, the exodus of black leaders. We've yeah. seen the likes of Mbalinduli, Makashu Legana resigning from the DA, and of course, uh, Kume uh, Ramuli for also uh, being one of the latest to ditch the party at a crucial time when you are on the ground trying to mobilize people to support the DA and vote for the DA. Thank you. Cool. Is there no other additional questions so that we don't have a back and forth? I'll let Soli deal with the Ekurileni and Tani issue, and then John will wrap up in terms of your final question. Soli. Well, thank you very much. Um, unlike Ekurileni, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a shame that you would then want to do that comparison, Paul. Um, First of all, Tswani wrote because we had just a, a new CFO that has taken over, had wrote, written and got, um, you know, concurrence from uh, Treasury and also from the Auditor General in terms of the late submission. And the documents have actually been submitted. And in fact, we are now hoping that there will be a better audit outcome than what we had uh, the previous time. So, Ekurulene had submitted the documents, but, um, you know, we know that uh, there's a whole lot of things and shady things that have been happening there that is preventing now the uh, MMC for Finance from releasing those documents um, to cancel and actually making them public. And this is something that, you know, I don't think you can then do a comparison between what Swan has done and what the Kurulene has done. Swan didn't hold anything back. It asked because of the new CFO and wanting to make sure that we comply, had written and had got concurrence and actually um, um, got uh, exempted from um, submitting on the deadline that was initially given. So that is, I think, uh, something that has been, uh, um, you know, adapted dealt with and, um, you know, needs to be responded in that way. And I think maybe before handing over to the leader, I'm, I'm questioning the media's stance around when people leave the DA versus when people leave other parties. People leave parties when people were told that they're placeholders within the EFF. People leave in their droves. Nobody wrote anything about that. People leave Action SA and join other parties. Uh, Bongani Balori left and so many others left the uh, action and say nobody written anything about it. But when the DA has one or two people leaves, then, you know, it makes uh, record news. Why is it only limited? And also we want to then racialize it when it also comes to the DA. Men, most, most black people leave um, um, action and say. They leave um, um, the EFF. They leave um, BOSA. They leave all these other organizations. Nobody says anything. But when it comes to the DA, then, uh, you know, there, is, there seems to be a much uh, bigger interest. And then maybe you must ask yourself the question, why the certain interest only in the DA? Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, well, let me just say that, I mean, some of those people that you mentioned, uh, you know, it's pretty ancient history. Mm -hmm. They left two years ago. Three, um, three years ago, yeah. But let me just say this, people come and go in politics. It's a natural ebb and flow. The 
party lineups in all parties look very different from election to election. But I think you also need to be mindful of the fact that we're going into the silly season now. What you know, people, it's just before the selection processes conclude uh, for political parties. You're going to see a lot of jumping around between political parties, all political parties. Now, as people realize that perhaps their chances of re-election to parliament or legislature is not so good where they currently are, and they obviously want to try somewhere different. It's like a transfer season in football. You know, you're going to get people moving around. But I can tell you the biggest movement and the biggest black exodus happening in South Africa is the black exodus out of the ANC to join Jacob Zuma's new MK. Whole branches of people that are leaving, whole structures that are leaving to the ANC to join uh, Jacob Zuma. And, you know, I think that's something that, sh that should be looked at very, very well. Um, you know, obviously, no one celebrates when somebody leaves a party, but it is a natural, it's a natural occurrence. The DA in five years' time is going to look very different to the DA uh, of today, uh, just as the DA today looks very different to the lineup that was there five years ago. It's a natural ebb and flow in politics. You can't shackle people down into a political party. People join a political party because they have ambitions, they want to serve. Things don't work out the way they want. They must be free in terms of our constitution to join any political party they want. I remain absolutely convinced that the DA is the most diverse political party in the country. Our top six represents all race groups in South Africa. The parties to the left and right of us are monochromatic and reflect no diversity whatsoever. Our support base is broken up into roughly thirds and the in-depth analysis of who supports who was done by the Social Research Foundation and released earlier this year. A third of the DA's voters are black, a third of them are white, and a third are coloured and the, the remainder are made up of uh, Indian and other minority groups. So I'm very, very comfortable that as the second largest party in the country, we are the only party, actually, that can draw from all race groups in terms of our support base. And that makes me very proud because I think as South Africans move towards voting on the basis of principle and ability to be able to deliver, I think more and more South Africans are going to realize that the DA is the only option that they have if they want to rescue the country. Thank you. Um, thanks very much. We are going inside to submit the dossier. So if any of you want to stay behind, we'll still be available afterwards. But thank you very much for coming through. Recent reports suggesting that Deputy President Paul Mashatile is working with shady characters who are allegedly financing his life of luxury. But who is Paul Mashatile and what does his past tell us about the kind of deputy he will be? Some of his financial relationships with people who've been linked to corruption and state capture. News 24 this morning reporting that Mashatile has often spent time at homes and buildings owned by Edwin Saudi. Saudi has also been linked to the 250. 55 million rand as Bestos project in the Free State. There are claims that Mashatile's lavish lifestyle is allegedly financed by those implicated in state capture. The 37 million rand waterfall mansion linked to Deputy President Paul Mashatile. The multi-million rand house is registered on a 99-year lease to Legacy Properties. The sole directors of Legacy Properties, by the way, are Mashatile's son, Tabiso, and his son-in-law, Neba Nonquelo. We have just come from a very ugly era of uh, state capture. But here we are. There's a president who faces a palapala better. There's a deputy president now who is allegedly cozying up with shady characters. Can you say without hesitation that the deputy president's hands are clean? Thank you very much. As you heard from our DA federal leader, we are here to hold Paul Mashitile accountable uh, for his corruption charges. I'm joined here today, though, by DASO federal leader, Liam Jacobs. Liam, why is it so important for us to be here today? 
You know, I think when uh, in South Africa we've developed this weird culture that we're afraid of the people who are in charge. We're afraid of the politicians who are sitting in these ivory towers. We're afraid of them. And I think that it's very important for us to not be afraid of them, to be fearless, to actually hold them to account. And when they are doing wrong, to point out that they are actually doing wrong. And that is what we are doing here today. We are holding officials to account. It's as easy as that. It is the fundamental core of democracy and that is what we are doing. I mean, you can't say democratic alliance without democracy. Yeah. Now, cater deployment and corruption is at the center of so many of the issues here in South Africa. And obviously, uh, corruption is not a victimless crime. So what are your thoughts on the matter? You know, many people think, and you know, you behind the camera, you probably think that corruption is in its... Ooh, Liam, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut you off for a second. We'll be back with you. Uh, our leaders are on the way to hand over their dossier to representatives of the presidency can see John and Solly making their way towards the union buildings as John is here to deliver a comprehensive dossier directly to the office of the president. Now this outlines the very serious corruption allegations leveled against Deputy President Paul Mashitile. As we know, Mashatila has been accused of being involved in an extensive web of corruption, from kickbacks, nepotism, luxury home purchases with taxpayers' money, dodgy tender deals, and levels of state fund abuse matching the dark era of Jacob Zuma. Oh, thank you. Um, and so, as you can see, Behind me, uh, we do have uh, John Stiernhazen, Soli Malazzi, um, and they are here with Soli Simanga to hand over uh, this very important dossier to the presidency. Uh, as uh, our leader has alluded to, uh, Paul Mashetile uh, is at the core and at the center of a web of corruption uh, that's included uh, nepotism kickbacks, as well as the purchasing of luxury homes using taxpayers' money. Uh, Mashatile has also uh, been uh, accused of uh, various tenders that were handed out to dodgy um, ANC cadres such as Edwin Sordi um, and has used these money um, to, to completely uh, rob the taxpayers. And, and it's, so it's why it's so important for us as the DA to be here to hold Paul Mashatile accountable. Now, President Cyril Ramaphosa promised um, in his uh, speech around a new dawn that he would be rooting out corruption. And we are well aware that he has failed uh, in this regard. Uh, I'm joined again uh, by our, our leader here, Liam Jacobs. Liam, I'm so sorry that I interrupted you. Uh, going back to the question, as we said, uh, corruption and cater deployment is really uh, at the core of so many of the issues that we face as South Africans. And, and they're not victimless crimes. So what are your thoughts on, on that statement? So when we look at corruption, we've got to understand what it is that corruption does. It's not something that's out there. And I said, you behind this camera, it's not something that's just behind the screen. It's not just something that's outside of your house. It actually comes into your house. When your water goes off, it's somebody that didn't put a pipe where they're supposed to put a pipe. When your electricity goes off, I mean, we all know what's happening at ESCOM. When your sewage is giving you problems, when your sewage is giving you what sewage gives, it's corruption, and corruption is not victimless. I've seen communities that don't have water. I've seen communities that don't have electricity. I've seen communities that don't have basic services, and this is all thanks to corruption. It's not victimless. In fact, in South Africa, it is public enemy number one as well. I don't know. Very sad state of affairs. Now, when Ramaphosa came into option, into office, uh, rather, he had promised to root out corruption inside the ANC and in the administration. Have we seen any examples of this happening? Well, the funny thing is, is that I actually went to the Merriam-Webster uh, dictionary quite recently. And what I found was, is that if you look at the word uh, corruption, you'll find the synonym Ramaphosa administration. It is impossible. It's not possible for this guy to root out corruption. If he could root out corruption, I'd be able to do a backflip. And quite frankly, right now, that's impossible. It's not going to happen under Ramaphosa. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Very, very true, Liam. Although I do believe that uh, you could do a backflip if you tried. Uh, now, Liam, you represent young people. You are elected by young people to represent the DA student organization. What do you think young people's uh, belief is and feeling is around the future of South Africa? You know, it's easy to think that young people don't care. You know, it's easy to think that young people just want to sit over on TikTok and just doom scroll until doom scrolling ends and they just want to scroll over on IG, they want to scroll over on X, but that's not the case. What we find is that a lot of young people actually want to register, actually want to come out and make a difference. That's what we're finding. I mean, I speak to so many of my friends and they're actually excited about the prospect of an election. They're excited about the prospect of a future that they can have a say in. They're excited about the prospect of having the ability to enact their dreams via democracy, to have a democracy that actually cares about them, to have a democracy that is more than what it just says in the constitution, but it's actually actionable democracy. So we're excited. I can tell you now there's young people in this country who are ready to unseat the ANC, who are ready to deal with public enemy number one, the EFF, and who are ready to put in a coalition government that will actually deliver services and will actually care about the people of South Africa. I'm so glad to hear that young people are feeling excited for this election. Uh, so what would your message be uh, to South Africans at home? Uh, why is it so important to register in this upcoming registration weekend? Um, and, and, and why, yeah, how are your feelings about it? So it's quite easy. This is how you register, okay? On the 3rd and the 4th of February, there will be a registration weekend. And it's as easy as taking your shoes, putting them on, walking out to the voting district, walking out to your voting station, and going out with your ID, of course, and not your driver's license, and registering to vote. It is that easy. You can go out this weekend and you can do it. And if you're far away from where your voting station is, what you can do is you can do it online as well. And please, 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 if you're unsure, if if you don't know whether you registered to vote, if you don't know whether you can vote, just head on over to check.da.org.za. Now, Liam, Ramaphosa has been characterized as being an absent president. Uh, for young people, what would a DA-led South Africa look like? Well, I've got to say this about Ramaphosa first. I mean, we, we live in a country where there's a high rate of absent parents. And Ramaphosa seems to be mimicking this. He seems to actually be saying, hey, we live in a country where social development doesn't exist. We live in a country where there aren't fathers, where there aren't mothers at times. And I'm going to be just like those absent parents. But here's what the DA says. The DA says that we can make a difference. The DA says that we can have a society where we actually have the freedoms that our constitution speaks about. Where we live in a society where you're not judged based on your race, where you don't get a job based on your race, where you don't get a job based on the card that you carry, the political card that you carry. We want a society where there's opportunity for everybody. We want a society where our diversity is not looked at as this abstract concept that doesn't matter. We want it to be a concept that actually matters, a concept that actually finds expression in our day-to-day -day lives, a concept that actually finds expression in how we go about our day-to-day. -day. And the way in which we do that, the way in which we ensure that this actually happens, well, you see it. You see it where we govern. You see that where we govern, people work. You see that where we govern, cities work. You see that where we govern, tourists go. And you see that where we govern, the basics are done right. All right. No, perfect. Thank you so much, Liam, for joining us. Uh, I see that our premier candidate, uh, Soli Msimanga, is here as well. Uh, Soli, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Um, I hope that you're doing well, Gwena, and uh, good day to uh, the viewers. No, thank you. Soli, why is it so important for us to be here today? Well, it is important because um, I'll talk about Gauteng more specifically. Um, right now, more than 1.3 uh, people are on the housing list um, and have been asking for houses and the, 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 the demand keeps growing. And we are here to then say this uh, this housing list could have been halved, if not more, had we dealt with the issues of corruption. Squarely, um, you know, putting Paul Mashatile right in the middle of it because if you were to look at it, when he was an MEC, millions of rents worth of contracts were given, none of the houses were built. Bridges were promised where communities were supposed to, you know, be benefiting from bridges. None of those have been done. Yet we also have loans, so-called loans that had been paid, um, you know, to, 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 her, uh, to his uh, son um, through the company and now his house has been built. And yet we are still sitting here 
here and saying, where is the 1.3 million houses going to come from if we're not going to get to the bottom of the corruption that is taking place and make sure that we're able to then recoup some of the money that can go into building, you know, houses for the people. The people of Alexander, that the president in 2019 promised a million houses, haven't had a single brick laid there. Um, yet we are then asking, what is happening with the Alexander Mafia? Because Paul Majatila seems to be somewhat in the middle of it. And we have been asking time and time again, can somebody do a thorough investigation into the billions that have, were supposed to have gone into um, the, uh, the, the, the Alexander Renewal Project? Can we look at the millions that were supposed to have been um, you know, used to build houses for the people so that we know why we're having such a huge backlog and we haven't been able to then um, you know, arrest this um, you know, um, runaway train? And yet, at the same time, we are also saying here the people of South Africa will have an option and a choice. The choice is to come out this weekend, register and check that they're registered properly to make sure that they're able to then kick and boot this government out and get a government that will care, a government that will be accountable, a government that will not be corrupt, a government that will have a vision in terms of how do we then take the people of South Africa, more particularly here, the people of Gauteng forward. And this is why we are here today to then say, if you are going to fail to take steps, we are going to then talk to the people of South Africa to make sure that the push you out through their vote and make sure that they get a government that they deserve and a government that will do well for them. Yeah. No, Sally, millions, as you said, still without housing. Uh, and yet we have ANC cadres using taxpayers' money uh, to buy luxury properties all across South Africa yeah. and in Gauteng. So corruption is clearly not a victimless crime. What, what are your thoughts on this? Well, you know, corruption is not a victimless crime, as you said. But let me say something to South Africans. Corruption steals more from the poor. Corruption steals more from the poor than it steals from the rich. When you don't have electricity, the rich will turn on their generators and then they have electricity. When you don't have water, the rich will ensure that they sink in boreholes. You will sit without water. When you don't have security because the president and the ministers and the premiers all have luxury vehicles and have cars here and in Cape Town, you and the police will not have vehicles that are able to then patrol um, and make sure that you are safe. The private sector and those that have money will hire private security to look after them. So, yes, corruption is um, indeed um, something that affects the poor more than it affects everybody. And those that have claimed that to, they are representing and love the poor have done the least to ensure that the lives of the poor changes for the better. They've actually ensured that the poor are actually much more worse off than they would have been a number of years ago and this is something that uh, we are wanting to let the South Africans know that, you know, the ANC doesn't love you. The ANC doesn't love the poor. It actually loves the rich or it actually loves those that, you know, are cut carry members of the organization, those that they can conjole and have corrupt um, relationships with. But you who are struggling, living in a shack, living without employment, living without electricity, living without water, having to queue to go into um, clinical hospitals, having to ensure that your child has to travel kilometers to get to a decent school, they don't care about you. Now, Soli, Premier Le Sufi has been an absent uh, Premier. We, we only see him on, on billboards and on TV ads. Uh, what would Gauteng look like under a DA government when you are Premier uh, later on this year? Well, we've had a Premier that has been more interested in being a Hollywood star. Um, wanting to appear more, you know, when there's cameras and then disappearing immediately when the cameras arrive. I can give you a number of examples. He's went to Merafong where he's gone and promised um, where the school has sunk uh, due to sinkholes that, you know, within a two months or three months, the problem will have been resolved. It's a year later. It's actually more than a year later. The problem still persists. He's gone to Angelo and promised that there will be 24-hour security in that area so that, you know, we can deal with the issues of the Zamazama. I can tell you right now, the Zamazamas are back operating as they have been operating. And I can tell you a whole lot more of examples of, you know, a premier that is more interested in talking in gimmicks, is more interested in actually just, um, you know, appearing in front of cameras instead of doing the job. But what is more interesting is that his latest stunt, which shows that the level of desperation that has crept into the governing party, where he's 
has promised 3,000 military veterans jobs, government jobs. What does that say about the ordinary person who has been looking for a job for a very, very long time? What does that say about the CPF members who have volunteered for years and years and have built rapports with communities and the police and have actually, you know, gained experience in doing the police work? Those that have been outside-lined, outside those that have been, uh, you know, marginalized for a very, very long time. But yet, because they are scared of the exodus of their own members from the ANC to the MK and other parties. Now, the way of uh, trying to hang on to them is by ensuring that they use government resources to hold on to them. And this is why we have been talking about nepotism. This is why we've been talking about corruption. And this is why we've been talking about a government that is uncaring, that doesn't care about the poor, that doesn't care about other members except those that are in a circle or those that are card-carrying members of that particular organization. And that is something that will have to change as a matter of agency and the people have their opportunity starting this weekend by registering and getting to the elections and voting on this corrupt and caring government. No, Solly, I'm glad that you mentioned uh, this final voter registration weekend. What would your message be to the people of Gauteng? If you have a destination that you want to get to, and you, 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 you want to fly to Cape Town, you want to fly overseas, or you want to go anywhere, the only way that you can get, um, you know, to your destination is if you buy a ticket. If you buy a ticket into that train, if you buy a ticket into, to get into that plane. And that ticket is the registration in this instance. We want to make sure that we make 2024 and going forward our 1994. That dream of 1994, we want to reignite it. The nightmare that the people of South Africa have been subjected to has to stop. And you coming out and registering is you buying that ticket to your next destination and you making sure that come May, you are able to then vote and ensure that we're able to then ensure that there's a government in place that will care, a government in place that will deliver, a government in place that will turn a nightmare that we have come to live into a beautiful dream um, going forward. No. Thank you very much, Solly. Uh, please, everybody, stay tuned because we will be right back with an interview with our federal leader, John Stianhazen, who will be giving... Oh, Solly Malazzi, I apologize, who will be giving us feedback on uh, the events that have happened today. Please do stay tuned. South Africa has descended into a mafia state. ANC cadres are robbing the country blind. And yet there are no consequences, no prosecutions, zero justice. Meanwhile, on our streets, crime is out of control. The ANC government has failed to keep South Africans safe. We need a criminal justice system that can rescue South Africa from the cancer of crime, corruption and lawlessness. But if we don't get the crooks out of cabinet, we will never get the criminals off the streets. That is why we need to bring back a new and improved Scorpions 2.0. The Scorpions 2.0 will be a truly independent crime-busting force, free from political interference, a Chapter 9 institution protected by the Constitution. And if the crooks in Cabinet want to shut it down like they did the old Scorpions, they will need a two-thirds majority vote in Parliament. If we want to clean up our streets and make our communities safe, we must start at the top and get the crooks out of Cabinet. Join the mission to rescue South Africa. Get help registering to vote at check.da.org.za. Register to rescue South Africa. Thank you for tuning in again. I'm now joined by our DA national spokesperson, Soli Malazzi. Soli, why is it so important for us to be here today? Well, it, it's very important because at the end of the day, the appointment of the deputy president is done by the president of the country. So he's the one ultimately with the power to appoint and fire the deputy president. This dossier that we have submitted here includes very serious allegations against the deputy president. And at the backdrop of that is the commitment that the president came to office with promising a new dawn of accountability, a new dawn of ethical leadership, and a new dawn of transparency. So when you juxtapose 
shows that with the seriousness of these allegations, only one thing becomes sensible to do, which is to fire Deputy President Mashatile from office because his actions are inconsistent with, one, the oath of office that he has sworn, but also the promises that have been made by the president about his new government. So we came here to deliver this dossier led by our leader, John Stian Hazen, because we believe that there should be accountability. The highest and the most senior political office bearers have a greater responsibility to behave in an ethical manner, and we are forcing the president to do the right thing. Uh, thank you, Soli. I'm glad that you mentioned Ramaphosa's new dawn because inside his new dawn, he promised to end corruption, uh, not only in government, but in the ANC. Have we seen any sign of that thus far? It's been a major letdown. I think the, pro the president over-promised. Um, it was naive on his part because the ANC as an organization is inherently corrupt. And any attempt to root out corruption in a, would have faced the most resistance and that's why he hasn't been able to act against his fellow comrades in there. However, it is important that the state institutions that have been established to support our constitutional democracy, the law enforcement agencies of the country do their job without any fear or favor against anyone at any given time because governments come and go but those institutions remain. That is why we still have faith in our law enforcement agencies and that's why we will be laying these charges so that they can go through our criminal uh, justice system. No, thank you. Now, we know that cater deployment and corruption are at the core of so many of the issues that South Africans face today, and it is not a victimless crime. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, absolutely, and I think it is one thing that South Africans need to pay careful attention to. Any money that is taken away or spent on corruption is taken away from uplifting the lives of South Africans, mostly the most vulnerable poor residents of our country who need government monies to be spent on delivering services, on making sure that there's provision of um, medicine to clinics, that the electricity is on the time, that refuse is removed on our streets. So corruption affects us at all times and it is so important that not only are we vigilant over the spending of our public monies, but that where they are not spent correctly, we take um, action proactively so to lay the charges, approach the public protector, approach the um, auditor general, but most importantly to use our power. We've got the registration weekend coming up um, you know, starting tomorrow. It is our final opportunity to register for the elections and everyone who has been affected by corruption and has seen how corruption has stolen from their community, from their kids, use your power, register to vote, to rescue SA and register to vote for the DA. Oh, perfect. Now, we're going towards arguably the most important election of our generation. Um, what would a South Africa under a DA-led government look like? Look, the first important thing that the DA will do is to rescue us from this path of destruction that we are in. It will mean that we refocus public monies on public services. It will mean that there will be accountable and ethical leadership. Corruption will not be tolerated. There will be openness in terms of how government conducts its business. We will hire individuals based on their expertise and skills, regardless of which political party they may be affiliated with. We will professionalize the public service because one of the things that hold us back is that our public service is highly politicized. So it is important that in order to destroy the destruction that CADA deployment has done, we need to professionalize the public service. Wow. Soli, uh, this weekend is obviously the final registration weekend. What do people uh, at home need to know about this and what would your final message to the people of South Africa be? Look, my final message to the people of South Africa is visit your local voting station. Make sure that you are properly registered to vote. If you've got a kid, a relative or a neighbor who's above 18, they've got an ID document, you know, encourage them to visit their local voting station so that they can be correctly registered. In this instance, you'll be able to vote where you are registered. So it is important that that registration is done correctly. And this election is important because in order to save our country, to rescue our country from this path of destruction. We need to use the power we have in our hands to choose the government that we deserve and that government is hopefully a dear government. Yeah. Now, our federal leader John Stianhazen is obviously inside now handing over uh, the docket. What will be the next steps going forward from here? 
Yeah. So the next steps um, from here onwards will be to lay criminal charges against the uh, deputy president because, as I indicated earlier, we believe that our law enforcement agencies are the right channels. We came here because politically it is the right thing to do for the president. We will also be filing a complaint um, with the Executive Ethics um, Members Act so parliament is able to do its investigation on that part. And from there onwards, we'll be able you know, to, to put our trust in those institutions because they are empowered to take action against violations or criminal acts that are done in the country. Yeah. Now, Soli, one amazing thing about this registration weekend is that we've seen a lot of young people yeah. coming out uh, to register for the first time. Uh, what, what, what vision can, can the DA offer uh, to the young people of South Africa, many of whom have lost hope? Yeah, look, I, I mean, from the profile of the leadership of the DA, you know, it exudes confidence, it shows that we invest in, in, in young people. So one of the things that we have driven for the longest time is to ensure that we've got a youth wage subsidy so that we can provide resources for young people who are looking for work and are not in school so that they can be able to reach destinations for interview, make sure that they're able to apply for, the, for those opportunities that they are looking for, but also to ensure that there's a restructuring of the national students' financial um, aid system in order to incentivize in such a way that those students who are performing academically can be rewarded and be provided with the opportunity to further their studies. So if you're a young person who is despondent about the path that we are currently on and wants to have a future in which you stand a stronger chance to find a job or you stand a stronger chance to further your studies, that government will be a DA government. So do the right thing. Visit your local um, voting state register to vote and it's the cool thing to do to vote I think it's high time that young people realize that civic activism is a cool thing to do and you can't be a cool young person if you are not registered to vote yeah, no, no, no. Sully, you are 100% correct there. It is very cool to vote. And as we've said on many occasions, uh, if your partner is not registered to vote, uh, you need to leave them. Um, because if your partner doesn't care about the future of this country, they don't care about you. Now, Sully, Ramaphosa was deputy president under uh, the Jacob Zuma years where uh, corruption was rife in the country and yet he came out to the people of South Africa and promised a new dawn. Do, do you believe that Ramaphosa has the credibility um, and the ability to actually tackle corruption in this country? Look, before we get that, to, to the young people, if anyone slides into your DMs, the first question you ask them, are you registered to vote? If they are not, don't entertain them. Um, but back on, on, on this, I think President Ramaphosa has not shown any resolve whatsoever to tackle corruption. The root of corruption in South African society lies in the ANC. If you look in terms of what the state capture report identified as the major culprits who not only enabled but facilitated state capture to heaven, it involves senior high-ranking members of the ANC from Gwede Mantashe, um, Nomvula Mokonyane, Fikile Mbalula, uh, Malusi Gigaba. All these individuals were at one stage or some are still high-ranking members of the ANC and the president has not moved an inch against those, those, those individuals. So we don't have faith whatsoever that the president can suddenly develop a spine strong enough to tackle his comrades. So the best thing that we must do is vote in our large numbers, give him a ticket out of the presidency so that we can install a president with the resolve and the courage to tackle corruption head on. No, thank you. Now, you mention a lot of the leaders around the president, uh, but I think a lot of South Africans were, were quite shocked um, in regards to the Palapala Pala issue and all of the, the money uh, shoved into uh, the president's uh, couch. Um, in regards to this, what, what actually transpired um, and why were charges uh, not taken? I know that the DA took a very strong stand in Parliament, but I think a lot of South Africans don't know why this process suddenly came to a halt. Look, it will remain one of the mysteries of, of, of our country. It will remain a mystery of how compromised, you know, all efforts for accountability against the president are. And it will remain a stain on the president's legacy because at the end of the day, you don't need law enforcement agencies to force you to do the right thing if you are a believer in doing the right thing. So what really happened is that the ANC abused its majority in parliament to stifle the process 
purpose of the parliamentary committee which was established in order to exonerate the president from any wrongdoing. And it, it, it is a shame that we live on their conscience for a long time because what happened there uh, is, is, is highly criminal. Now, Solly, you know, we keep seeing uh, ANC cadres getting richer and richer, uh, generally on the backs of, you know, taxpayers. We, we see with uh, Paul Mashatile, for example, that uh, taxpayers' funds uh, were used uh, to purchase luxury properties all across uh, the country. Uh, meanwhile, South Africans uh, continue to suffer in poverty. We have a, a crazy cost of living crisis um, that's affecting majority of South Africans. What would the DA do and what is the DA doing to tackle this cost of living crisis? Look, we, we've put several proposals on, on, on the table and we've been driving this issue for a very long time. But one of the key interventions that we have proposed is, you know, a reduction of the fuel levy uh, because we believe that it will be an important intervention in there. We have also called for the removal of VET on uh, specific food um, food items such as bone in chicken, um, which is the largest uh, provider of protein to many vulnerable uh, families. And it's very encouraging that the Parliamentary Committee on, on Finance has now put steps in place to ensure that some of those recommendations on the removal of VET on specific food items are then removed in order to provide that, that relief to vulnerable South Africans. Thank you, Solin. Now, obviously, one of the biggest issues that's uh, stifling our economy is, is load shedding. Um, and, and as a result of load shedding, we've been seeing uh, job shedding, uh, water shedding uh, in parts of, of Gauteng. What is the DA's plan to tackle this massive issue in our country? Look, I, I mean, it's, it's such a disgrace that we've had to experience load shedding for for, for for this long in the country. And we have been calling, for instance, for the debuttling of unbundling of ESCOM because um, structurally it is the right thing to do. But we've also been calling for, you know, diversifying our sources of energy so that there is not um, this unhealthy over-reliance on the national grid, which is currently uh, not coping with the ever-increasing demand um, that is there in the country. No. Thank you so much, Solly, for, for joining us. And thank you to our viewers at home for signing in. Uh, the reality is, is that we are at a pre precipice um, and South Africa really needs, this is our only chance to rescue uh, the country. And so the upcoming registration weekend uh, is coming and it's your last chance to go to a voting station uh, and register. So this weekend, please uh, go out uh, to your local voting station, look for your DA public reps and act and they'll assist you uh, in registering to vote. Alternatively, uh, do what I did uh, and skip the queues by going to check.da.org.za. We need to rescue South Africa, but we need your help. So please, if everybody... Oh, <laughs> uh, I was about to wrap up, but I, I have a, a surprise guest here. Uh, clearly, it took a little bit longer than expected to, to hand Sorry, over the, the docket. No, 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 no. I'm glad that uh, that our DA federal leader, John Stianazen, could join us now. John? Very hot here in uh, Very, very, very hot. But I, I think that it's also the heat that you're putting uh, on the presidency uh, with uh, this docket that you submitted today. Could you tell us more about uh, this dossier and why is it so important that we're here today? Well, it's important because you have very, very serious allegations against the deputy president. And these are not just allegations that uh, relate to hearsay or the like. These are very, very serious investigative journalist uh, outcomes uh, that have followed paper trails, that have followed bank accounts and followed money and have provided, I believe, an irrefutable case that the deputy president has to answer. Now, you can't have a president who says that you're fighting corruption, but the man in the office right next to you is involved in it has these serious allegations saying you represent. I think that the president needs to, for once, put the country ahead of his own party interest and do the right thing uh, by all of the South Africans at home. But the reality as well is that had the president kept his promise that he made to you and I and all of the people watching and the the nation in his very first State of the Nation address five years ago that he was going to introduce lifestyle audits for all cabinet ministers. Had he done that, Mr. Mashatile perhaps wouldn't be sitting in the office that he is today in the first place. But of course, we all know it was another broken promise by Sir Ramaphosa, another 
false and empty hope that he gave South Africa uh, and the like. And that's why we're very clear. When the DA gets into office, after this next election, we're going to make sure that every cabinet minister, every senior government official undergoes a lifestyle audit. How does the deputy president explain his multi-million rand playboy lifestyle on his income? And that is precisely what a lifestyle audit would get to the bottom of. Uh, There's a very, very serious case to answer here. Also, the president, I think, has lost all credibility. How can you say you're fighting corruption when it's happening under your own nose in the office next door to you? Now, John... You've handed in the docket. Where to next on this issue? Well, obviously, we're giving the president tool, the SONA, to take action. And before people say, oh, well, what can he do? Tom and Becky took action against Jacob Zuma when he was implicated in the Shabir Sheikh matter. There's no reason why the president cannot get rid of him. The constitution is clear. The president appoints the, the deputy president. The president can disappoint the deputy president and that's what we're calling for him to do in this particular matter but if he fails to act like i presume he's going to we will then pursue the law enforcement agencies the public protector ethics committee in parliament and make sure that those criminal charges are laid against uh, mr mashatile as well no thank you now corruption obviously has a ripple effect on every aspect of uh, south africa and it's not a, a victimless crime what are your thoughts on the matter yeah corruption is not a victimless crime And in South Africa, the real victims are the 30 million South Africans who live below the poverty line because every cent of public money that is being stolen is one less cent of money that can be spent on building schools, building houses, creating bursaries for young people, being able to fix our hospitals and clinics, giving our children a decent education. So essentially what the corrupt are doing is robbing your future and robbing your children's future. And that is why we have to bring it to an end. And so I'm really proud of the Western Cape government. Every government department this year got a clean audit. The city of Cape Town, clean audit again this year. I think it's the 10th time in a row. The uh, Midvale municipality under Mayor Peter Texera, clean audit. Where the DA governs, we make sure that every cent of money is spent on the people and not on the politicians. And that's how you, you deliver and ensure that your economy grows, that people are lifted out of poverty and into opportunity, and that we bring people together towards a brighter future and don't condemn them to a life of poverty. Now, John, Ramaphosa has proven to be an absent uh, leader. What would South Africa look like uh, under a uh, DA-led government and with you uh, as the the president of the republic? Well, let me just say, it's very, very disappointing the president has turned out to be the pup snook that he has. I think he came to office on a huge promise and wave of enthusiasm. He's completely broken those promises, he's completely destroyed uh, all of those promises that he made. The reality is that if what we need in these buildings, the union buildings behind me, is decisive leadership. Leadership that's honest, leadership that's accountable, and leadership that delivers. Within the first 100 days of us taking office, we will introduce lifestyle audits for all senior politicians and all senior government officials to make sure that nobody who's got a dodgy lifestyle ends up making decisions in the union buildings. Secondly, we would reintroduce the scorpions immediately. I will send a bill to parliament to reintroduce the scorpions so we have a multidisciplinary agency that's able to combat corruption wherever it occurs in the system. Thirdly, we would pass the NK to deployment bill in the first year of parliament that would start to professionalize our civil service and make sure we have merit-based appointments. And then immediately send a bill to Parliament to look at the devolution of policing powers down to provinces so we can start to keep people safe. That is what decisive action looks like. Surrounding yourself with the right people, making sure that you adopt the right policies so we can get our economy moving, we can get the country moving, and we can get our people back to work. People want to rescue South Africa off this election, then you need to put the DA in the union building so that we can start the work of building a better future for all of us. Now, John, This weekend is the final registration weekend. What would your message be to the people of South Africa? My message here is simple. In this election, there's just too much at stake to stay at home. You need to register to be part of it. With the multi-party charter now, we are this close to being able to form a new government, getting the ANC out, putting a new government in that's going to deliver for the people of South Africa. Never before in the last 30 years have we had such a good chance to be able to get the ANC out and bring in a new government. Don't waste this opportunity. You will only have power to vote if you are registered. So please, this weekend, 3rd and 4th of February, make sure you go to your polling station. If you want to skip the queues, you can go to our website, check.da.org.za. That's check 
www.da.org.za and you can do it online. It takes literally five to 10 minutes. Make sure you're registered. Make sure your family are registered. We're going to need you on the front lines in the battle to rescue South Africa. And you can only join us there if you're registered to vote. Thank you very much, John. And thank you to the viewers at home. You've heard it here. We can end corruption. We can end cater deployment. But we need all South Africans to unite behind the DA's vision to rescue South Africa. And the power is in your hands. This weekend, go out to your local voting station and register to vote. Look out for our DA public representatives as well as our DA activists or as John said, skip the queue and go to check.da.org.za and we will help you register. But the time is now, South Africa. The power is in your hands. Enough is enough. Genoeg is genoeg. So that's me signing out. Don't lose the faith, South Africa. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Thank you. South Africa, our country is at a crossroads and you have the power to help rescue it. We are at a critical point in history and now more than ever, we have the final chance to break free from a national government led by crooks and elect a new caring government. We can end load shedding, we can reduce crime and we can beat poverty. The key to rescuing our country is to ensure that you're correctly registered to vote in this year's election. The 3rd and 4th of February is the IEC's final voter registration weekend and your last chance to register correctly. So visit check.da.org.za to check your registration status or to get help registering online now. It's in your hands to vote out corruption and usher in a new era for our beautiful nation. The DA is the only party with a proven track record of delivery. Where we govern, unemployment is the lowest and we do not tolerate corruption. Together, we can all shape a better future. So register to vote and let's rescue South Africa. Power to the register. Get help registering to vote at check.da.org.za. Register to rescue South Africa. Thanks for watching. All across our beautiful country, people are joining forces to elect the new government that can rescue South Africa, help our rescue mission, and register to vote. Get help registering online now at check.da.org.za. Let's rescue South Africa.